This timber used to belong to a post that was holding up the porch in my old house in Adelaide. It's an Australian hardwood called Jarrah, and this stuff is beautiful timber to work with. The post in question was getting eaten out by termites. Because of that, I had to replace this post with something else, but the majority of the post, about 1.6 meters worth of it, was fine, and this is fantastic fantastic timber that has been seasoning now for about 60 years so it's as stable as it's going to be. A couple months ago I took it off to a local sawmill where it was cut into different sizes for this specific build so now all I've got to do is fix up some of the knots, cut off the sections that I don't want, join it together and turn this into what's probably going to be one of my favorite tables. This project has been on my mind for a very very long time. I don't own a single piece of solid hardwood furniture so this could potentially be my new favorite project. All right, I'm gonna start with the tabletop first, and once that's all glued up, then I'll move on to the legs. I left this overnight in the clamps to dry because generally speaking, the harder the wood, the longer the glue takes to work. So because this is Jarrah and a very hard hardwood, I thought I'd rather be safe than sorry and give it a full 24 hours to work. The next thing before I get to sanding is to go through this with a fine tooth comb and find any defects that I need to fill with epoxy. I can see a really small one here on the join and no doubt there will be others. So I'm gonna do that first, let that epoxy set up and then I'll come over with the sander and smooth this all off. These square pieces of timber are going to be used for the legs. I epoxied the holes ages ago, so that's completely dry and set up. So now I need to run them over the jointer and put them through the thicknesser to get them to a nice smooth surface like this. The next step is to cut out the mortises into these legs where the rails can be glued into. So to do this, I'm gonna start by marking out where I want the rails to go. I'll remove the majority of the material with the drill press and then come back afterwards with the router so that I can cut a nice clean line and then the rails will slip into that. I'm making sure to cut the outside edge 
of the mortise, the edge that you're gonna see first for all the legs using the same setting on the fence. That way the edge that you see is gonna be the same all the way around the table and if I need to make any minor adjustments, they're gonna be on the inside, the part that's less visible. It's the next day, but before I ended yesterday, I put a coat of polyurethane on the underside of the tabletop just so that I could essentially keep working overnight. It's dried enough now for me to touch it, so I'm gonna get started on the leg assembly and I'm gonna use the underside of the table to measure that out and get the sizes. <laughs> I need to do is cut a small shoulder into these rails and the reason for that you can see here when I cut these mortises I didn't cut them the full length of these rails and the reason why is I wanted to have a shoulder to hang over so the curve that the router bit has created can be covered by the rail that that shoulder so now I need to cut essentially that small piece off so the the rail can slot in and the top of the rail is flush with the top of the legs. All right, all the pieces have been sanded up to 240 grit. The next thing is to glue the leg assembly together and then attach it to the tabletop. This is sort of the moment of truth. If I've forgotten anything after this step, it kind of is what it is, so I'm a little apprehensive. Okay. All right, so there was a bit of chaos that ensued after I'd uh, put those two clamps on. Basically, they weren't working. It just wasn't enough. So I ended up getting this ratchet strap to pull these two legs in because there was a gap on this join that was just too big and, and I wasn't able to squeeze it out. So this ratchet strap's pulling the uh, two legs into the rail and now we're about maybe half a millimeter there and maybe a millimeter on that end, which is a tolerance that I'm more than happy with. So now we just gotta do it all over again. It's the next day and the long leg assemblies have dried. I've got them out of the clamps and cleaned them up a bit. So now I need to take these and attach them to the short rails. I'm gonna leave this to dry for at least 24 hours before I even think about taking it out of the clamps. But in the meantime, I get started on finishing the tabletop. I don't normally sand past 240 grits. I just think it's a case of diminishing returns past that point. Now obviously after your first coat of finish, you come back with something like 600 grits and you knock off all the high spots. But sanding up to a super high grit before your first coat of finish, generally, it's not really worth it. However, with things like tabletops, where this is the main showpiece, this is the bit that you're gonna to touch and feel the most, this is where I will go up to the high grit. So 
Right now I'm on 320 grits and I'm gonna finish on 600 grits. For the finish, I'm gonna be using mostly white foam polyurethane, but this also has a bit of linseed oil and some mineral turpentine mixed into it. I feel like I need a drum roll for this next part. And now, the moment that all the woodworkers have been looking forward to. Let's get some finish on this. 